One of the strangest mysteries of the universe that continues to baffle astronomers are the phenomena of fast radio bursts, or FRBs. Lasting only a few milliseconds, these highly energetic bursts have only been known since about 2001, and while we don't yet know much about them, we can infer from their behavior that the sources of the bursts seem to be very small, so small in fact that the sources must be less than a few hundred miles across. This eliminates a lot of possibilities as potential sources of the activity, including most normal stars, sending us into another tier of explanations, none of them particularly good so far. One of those potential explanations are the activities of alien civilizations. Unexplained radio signals from space are nothing new. The universe is teeming with natural, radio-emitting objects. But in the case of FRBs, they behave very strangely, and one research team suggested in 2015 that they seem to conform to a mathematical pattern, at least as far as the bursts known at the time were concerned. If present, that pattern doesn't really make much sense as far as our understanding of cosmology goes. And to add icing to the cake, they appear to originate invariably, again so far, from only outside our galaxy. A head scratcher indeed. They seem to be distant because of a metric known as the dispersion measure. The FRBs emit the same thing at many frequencies at once. Think of it as a radio station that beams out the same radio show on all frequencies on the dial. But those frequencies do not all travel at the same speed. Some of the waves get delayed by floating electrons in space. This has the effect of higher frequencies crossing space faster than lower ones. The bigger the difference in time between the two, the further away the origin of the burst is. As it turns out, the origins for the FRBs seems very distant, and new research suggests that they are very common, with thousands happening each day. The reason we don't see them is because they happen so fast that we can only catch them by chance. More, just a few days ago, research came out that found one that repeats. This eliminates one of the main natural explanations, that of colliding neutron stars. But even stranger, there is a kind of reported pattern to these bursts. In 2015, researchers Michael Hipke and John Learned determined that of the 10 or so FRBs known at the time, the delay between the arrival of the first and last parts of the signals are always multiples of the number 187.5. No known natural process can do that, but the pattern may not actually be real. More on that in a minute. If that pattern is present, it might imply that the sources of the burst line up at regularly spaced distances from Earth. This is very difficult to explain with a natural explanation if we take the data at face value, so much so that alien activity is the easy explanation in much the same way that finding distance marker signs on a road would indicate human activity. The odds are in the aliens' favor in this case and are estimated to be 5 in 10,000 that this pattern would just be due to chance. But don't get excited yet, we could be misinterpreting the data, and subsequent observations of FRB since 2015 do not line up with the pattern calling the whole thing into question. Why the first 10 did and the subsequent bursts did not is a complete mystery, but the current consensus is that the pattern wasn't really there and that the effect was a statistical flaw from having too small of a sampling to go on. It could also be that the sources for the FRBs are in reality much closer to home. They could have galactic origins and merely present the appearance of being billions of light years away by emitting long frequency waves before emitting short ones on a delay. Or they could be even closer. It has been suggested that the FRBs are emissions from our own spy satellites that we're accidentally picking up. This is particularly interesting because a group of FRB-like signals that had been detected by a single radio telescope were thought to be originating from space. It turns out they weren't. They were coming from the microwave oven in the lunchroom. Another possibility is that super-dense stellar remnants could be the sources, though this explanation is somewhat weak because it's based on the fact that we really don't know very much about the physics of how those produce radio waves. Other potential explanations include oddly behaving solar flares, activity around black holes, and many others, so it's best not to run to the alien explanation just yet. There's a good reason for this other than skepticism. While sending out engineered signals that contain mathematical patterns would be a logical way to announce your presence to the universe, there are a lot cheaper ways to do it. FRBs, if they originate outside the Milky Way, would take a huge amount of energy to produce, about the same amount our sun produces in a month or more. In addition to that, the signals are pretty ambiguous. They don't really look like something aliens would intentionally send. If your aim was to wow other civilizations with your math skills, you'd probably do something less ambiguous, such as base a message on pi or simply count out numbers like they did in the movie Contact. And you would do it on selected frequencies as opposed to eating up energy by blasting the signal out on a wide spectrum of frequencies, as is the case with FRBs. 
No two frequencies are the same where interstellar communications are concerned. Certain ones, such as the hydrogen line that SETI places a high value on, are better at tagging your signal as a dead ringer for being artificial than other frequencies. What you wouldn't do is intentionally make your communications questionable, as in the case of FRBs. You'd want your signal to be loud and clear and easily understood as artificial. This is not so with the FRBs. But that's all based on the assumption that alien signals would come in the form of communications. But if we are any indicator, that would not be true in most cases. The fact is, we've only sent out a few intentional signals, and we have a nasty habit of not repeating them, which is one of the criteria SETI requires to call an alien signal an alien signal. It must repeat and be independently verifiable by other scientists. In reality, most of our radio signals that aliens might pick up would be random things like radar. So that begs a question. If artificial, what if the FRBs are not designed for communication? at all. Enter in a paper released on January 5th of 2017 by Manasvi Lingham and Abraham Loeb that lays out just such an alien scenario that seems consistent with the data where a specific type of alien activity would fit. Their idea is that the FRBs might be extremely powerful for a reason. They're pushing sales. They have determined that the frequencies where we see the FRBs just happen to be those perfect for pushing spacecraft connected to huge sails. They suggest that the beams powering them sweep by very rapidly, explaining the short duration of the bursts, and that if they are indeed pushing spacecraft, we should see that in the light curves of the bursts. They also note that not all FRBs need to be of alien origin. Some may be natural, or they may all be natural. Only time and more research will tell. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently with a new book coming out. It's called Supermind and tells the tale of a scientist that plays God and creates a simulated universe. And be sure to check out my other books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular, in-depth explorations into the strange, unusual, and interesting aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.